Hello everyone, uh, welcome to In Development 2016. I have the uh, the honor to be your host today. Uh, I was supposed to have the honor last year, but I'm I'm not good at bi riding bicycles, so I destroyed myself a bit and couldn't have come here. But my name is Sosovsky. I will be your host, and I would like to introduce you to our first speaker, Dan Darocha, the creator of Cube and the the previous smash hit and the upcoming smash hit called Hugh. He is going to talk to you about breaking into the games industry and give him a big and warm applause, please. Hi guys, so my name is Dan DeRosha. I am the director at Toxic Games and Fiddlesticks. I'm best known for creating the game Cube, which came out on Steam in early 2012. It was the first indie fun game to come out. How many people here have heard of the game, by the way? Oh, quite a few. Um, for those of you who haven't, I'm going to show you a quick video now. There were some technical issues just now, so I don't know if it's going to work, but we'll find out. Oh, it works. Cool, so that was cute. So to give you a better idea of how I got into the industry, I'm going to share my uh, story of going from student to indie and sort of tips and tricks that you guys can do to get in the industry yourself. So I started off at e doing e-media, Amersham College, back in 2005 now. And I was sort of pursuing my passion of um, web design, animation, that sort of thing. And I, I wanted to do music, you know, the long hair, played guitar and that sort of thing. But I thought going into animation or so forth was a safer bet. I then went to Newport University in South Wales. I applied for the animation course, but I got turned down because my drawing wasn't up to scratch. So I was then recommended for the um, games course. And I thought, you know, I love games, love all that stuff. Um, my 3D modeling was up to par, so they took me on the course. My first couple of years were spent enjoying the fruits of university life, you know, living on my own, that sort of thing. And then I thought, okay, it's my third year, got to go into the big world, it's time to pull my socks up. So I teamed up with two other guys, we created this short 10 minute demo, we called it Project Cube, it was made in Unreal Engine 3, and uh, yeah, it was a short 10 minute demo where it displayed several mechanics of extruding blocks, each cube had a different functionality. We then showed it at our end of year graduation show. We made this full on booth with like bathroom tiled wallpaper to make it more, um, it look much cooler. And we got lots of attention from lecturers and other game developers that came to the show. And it was actually, um, yeah, a few lecturers, I think it was even Mike Bethel who came along and said, you know, we should go indie. And we didn't really know what indie was back then. And one of the things I learned at uni, I mean, it was about, that incubation sort of thing. I wouldn't have made Cube if it wasn't for that, really. A lot of the stuff you can learn online, or the, the technical side of things, but I think being within that team is, is, um, you know, is very powerful. So once you've graduated from uni, I think there's two routes that you can go down now. And this wasn't, this wasn't really applicable about 10 years ago. So you can either get a job in the industry at an established studio, or you can go indie. So we went the indie route. We uploaded the game to a website called ModDB. Had around 10,000 downloads within a few weeks. 
lots of positive feedback on the game. And we thought, okay, maybe we've got something here. Maybe we should take it further. Then File Planet got in touch. They wanted to feature the game on their website. We thought, okay, let's, let's see what we can go next. So someone recommended that we go to a games conference. We'd never been to one before. So we went down to Brighton in the UK, um, Develop Conference, which is the UK's biggest event. And it was a real eye-opening experience. You know, we met some cool people in the industry, bumped into Mark Rain, the VP at Epic Games, and we showed him the game. Now, I think we had an eight-minute video on an old, an old phone, and we were showing people this, and it was a pretty terrible way of promoting your game. But you know, Mark Rain, we showed it to him, and he was really enthusiastic about it, and we ended up talking to him for about half an hour. And then we thought, okay, this is a real boost in confidence. Maybe... You know, we do have something here. Let's, let's keep going and see where we can take it. And at that point, we thought, there's nothing else that we're going to do now. We, we're going to focus on this game and, and turn it into a full commercial thing. So the next step was to secure some funding to enable us to make the game full-time. So we submitted to something called Indie Fund, which was new at the time. And it was, you know, it ticked all the boxes, exactly what we were, we were after. And... For those of you who don't know, Indie Fund is a collective of game veterans. Hey there, guys. Um, Jonathan Blow, Kelly Santiago, and a few others that came together to make a fund from up-and-coming developers such as ourselves. So we submitted the game, the short 10-minute demo. We weren't really expecting much back. You know, we thought, let's give it a shot. You know, they got back, back to us within a week, really excited. They wanted to continue talking. We were over the moon. So they had over 200 applicants, and they picked only three, including us. The two other applicants were uh, American teams, and they were also friends of Indie Fund, and they also have game experience. We were just graduates, no game experience, and from the UK. So one of the key reasons that we were selected, 90% of the applicants were just ideas on paper or watermark trailers. We actually had a physical 10-minute demo that people could play and understand the mechanics straight away, which is, which is really powerful. So at the moment, I think there's quite a lot of funds kicking around. There's government funding, EU funds. Um, I think there's a Dutch Game Fund or something like that around here. I think, and it's important that you look at those and see if you can take your game to the next level because with funding, we're able to make the game full-time. Or even self-fund. You know, I worked at Domino's Pizza for like five years during university, and that kind of funded me to go to all these events and that kind of thing. So with that funding, we had to secure premises. We ended up renting a, a small apartment and working and living in that same place. Now, I wouldn't recommend that for long-term development. Um, that we, we ended up pulling each other's hair out, but it, it worked for that game, and it worked really well. We were able to pay salaries, hire new talent, get people on board. When we started making the game... We, we couldn't get a coder. We just couldn't afford a, co a coder, and all of us were designers. So we used visual scripting to make the entire game. But with, um, with the cash, we were able to bring on a coder and attend the game events, which, you know, we went to over 15 events in the first year to promote the game all over the world. And then we launched the game in early 2012 on Steam. Pay back that investment within four days on sale. And, yeah, I think it's important to prepare for what's next because we, we did development right up until the end, until launch, and we didn't really have a clue what we were going to do after that. And when it came to that point, we were sort of burnt out from development, and I think we, we should have been smart about that and known what was to come next. We ended up moving back home to our hometowns and then taking a break, released some DLC, did a few bits and bobs here and there, but nothing substantial from that point. I think the key is to be frugal as well. When, once you start generating revenue, it's important to remember how hard it was to get to that point and sort of spend wisely. I think when we released the game, we started splashing the cash a bit on, on well, events that didn't make sense or um, you know, doing stuff like DLC that perhaps didn't make as much revenue as we'd hoped. So I think it's important to think about that. But yeah, after Cube, they opened the doors to many new opportunities. We did a revamped version called the Director's Cut, which came out last year on PS3, PS4, Xbox One, Wii U. And we also supported the Oculus Rift DK2. We did a boxed version in shops in, in Germany, I think. I mean, that was, that was cool to actually walk down into a, a shop and see the physical version on the shelves. 
We did the collector's bundle. Um, and now we're working on Cube 2 as well. And I also started a second company and applied lessons learned. The second company was called Mudvark. Now, you might be asking, why did I do that? It was sort of to explore different creative opportunities to collaborate with other people, such as um, Henry Hoffman, who was also a, a university colleague. We did some indie game dev and, and contract work to fund ourselves. And then I also think it's very important to enter competitions and attend events because there's so many things that you'll learn from these events, whether it be going to talks or bumping into different people. And then sort of the icing on the cake is winning awards. And that is really good for promotion of the game and exposure, especially if you're starting out. As soon as uh, someone sees that you've won awards, that kind of changes the whole perspective uh, and view of your game. Another important aspect, I think, is learning business tactics. At the end of the day, an indie studio is a, it's a business. And, yeah, I think there's lots of things you can do. I, when I was starting out, I was reading loads of business books. I think it's important to get a dedicated business person on, on your team. Um, when you're in uni, think about the guy that, you know, is doing, uh, or, you know, he's very good at keeping on time, uh, very organized. You want that person on, on your team to handle the business side of things. On our team, I sort of do that now. When we started out, all three of us were just doing the same thing. All of us were making levels. All of us were going to the events, and it didn't really pan out. It was only when we got more contractors involved, we realized who's good at what, sort of playing to our strengths. It's the yin and the yang. And even look at get an accountant and a lawyer. That's going to help you loads. Obviously, at the start, you won't be able to afford them, but as time goes on, they're going to be invaluable. And then agree on terms early. I think... Being in university or college, when you start a team, it's all, it's all well and good. But as soon as money is involved and, and your business starts growing, different uh, things come into play. And it might get a little trickier down the line if you haven't agreed on certain terms. And then I think it's important to think outside the box. Now, if you're looking for a job, for example, you don't want to just be CV 524 that got emailed to the employer. You want to go outside and do some crazy stuff that other people aren't really doing. I mean, Oliver, age 24, is a good example. He made some wacky YouTube video. I think it was like a rap. And he sent it to Bossa Studios. And, you know, they, they loved it and they employed him. Now he's their community manager. Uh, now, you don't, I'm not saying you have to do that sort of thing, but it's important to think what you could do, such as maybe on, on Twitter you found like a niche. Um, you, you started promoting your artwork and someone noticed that, then I think that can work as well. There's lots of um, things you can do. And just keep creating content, I think, is, is an important thing. Um, game jams. Do loads of game jams. You're going to get better. You're going to improve your skills. Uh, my colleague Henry did a game jam. Uh, it was the Leap Motion Indicate 3D Jam. And he made a game called A Bored Looking Glass, which is a VR sort of thing with the Leap Motion attached to the front of the Oculus Rift, so you can actually see your hands in game. And that hadn't really been done much before that. This game came first place, which enabled, um, well, both of us to go to Indicate East, and they kind of covered all the costs. So that's another thing, is winning prizes, um, even cash prizes that will fund development. And then we got promotion on the back of that, which was really good. Experiment with loads of different stuff. HTC Vive, other VR, mobile, PC games, console games, Try different things, and then diversify your portfolio, I think, is important. Because there's so many games coming out now, so many different business models, it's hard to know which direction to head in. For example, we've been doing different games. We've got, like, Mortemelon Hue, which is a 2D puzzle platformer, Gravitation, which is a 3D puzzle platformer, and then Cube 2. So now, now let's talk about building your reputation. I think it's a very important thing. This is a quote here from Shahid Ahmed, who um, gave this quote on a panel that I sat on with him earlier this year. And it talks about, you know, there's so many games coming out because everyone has access to these tools now, all the 3D engines and so forth, and all these tools are free. It's much easier to get your game out there on the App Store, on Steam Greenlight and so forth. So building your reputation is, is sort of the key to bring that fan base with you to your next game and, and thereafter. So here's a list of different things. I think Twitter is a powerful 
powerful one. You know, you can interact with other developers, publishers. Screenshot Saturday is a really good way of getting your game out there in front of people. And I think it's also good as, to get it out early, as, as long as the art is, is in a good position, because then people are going to know that you came up with the idea first. The worst situation is if you came up with the idea, you didn't tell anyone, and then it got released, and everyone thinks that person came up with it first. Um, yeah, talking to other devs. I mean, that's a great thing. Interacting, getting into that communication, and building a following. And if you go to someone's profile, that you see they've got a few thousand followers. It looks like they know what they're doing. They've got cool artwork or whatever, and interact with them. Again, Instagram. I mean, you can post your screenshots on there, get the hashtags going. Vine, I mean, I haven't really seen much on Vine, but maybe be that guy, that crazy guy that posts all those awesome Vine videos. Facebook is a, is a standard thing. Reddit, subreddits and all that stuff, that's really good for interacting with other, other developers and promoting your work, getting it out there. IndieDB, I'm not sure how, much, how relevant that is at this point in time, but when we were using it, it was really powerful. Uh, I, th I think Cube was like number two on the front page at one point, and that's a good way to get instant feedback put a few builds out. When we started, we put, I think we released a build every week and got constant feedback on that. MailChimp, build a newsletter, a mailing list. Every time we go to events, we have a list and get people to sign up, you know, to give them free giveaways eventually or early access to the game when it comes out. Become part of your local game dev community. I think that's very powerful, especially if you're starting out. You get to meet people, like-minded people that are doing the same sort of thing as you. In London, we've got the London Indie Meetup once a month, and that's just growing and growing, and it's really good to get feedback from developers that are already doing stuff. And then give presentations like this. That's a really good way of building a following. Sit on panels, network at conferences, because you never know who you're going to bump into. Um, Mark Rain is a, is a good example, and that got us to the next rung. And then just keep snowballing that effect. And then you get to build rapport. You get to meet all these developers, publishers, investors, journos, streamers, and YouTubers. Build that contact list, and then you can tap into them. And then once you've got that, you kind of think, well, do you need a publisher or not? Because if you can do a lot yourself. Showcase your game at events. And then go, go to random things. So I, I think I went, to, I went on a picnic for a friend's birthday, and then I met the interactive director for Iron Maiden. And I'm a big fan of Iron Maiden, and this was completely random. But um, we ended up chatting, and now we're talking about doing a game together. So always be promoting your game, no matter when. Just always talk about it, talk about what you do. And be confident. I think go up to these people and talk to them. You know, I, I used to hate giving uh, presentations when I was in university. I, I'd be the guy like, playing the game while someone else talks about it. But then I thought, it's time, it's time to promote. This is, you know, I have to learn how to do this stuff if we're going to take the game to the next level. So yeah, let's talk about game engines. I mean, there's so many tools. You guys have probably heard, out, heard of a few. There's one such as BuildBox, Construct2, Game Maker. Construct2 in particular was, is very fast to prototype. I think we produced Mortemelon within three months. Uh, it uses a whole visual scripting tool, and it's all HTML5 based. So very fast, good for game jams. 3D engines, you know, Unreal Engine 4, Unity, all these are free to get, get your hands on. It's CryEngine, but I haven't really used it. I'm not sure. I don't know of many devs that do use it. But it's, it's a no-brainer now to just download that software and, and get involved with that. So yeah, technology has changed so much in the last five years, even when we started out on Cube. It's pretty insane. It's new business models. There's different game design trends. Art, even the art, you know, pixel art, voxels, low poly, what's going to be next? Do you stay on trend, or do you just do whatever you want? I don't think there's a, an answer for that. Do what you love. And all these, all these game uh, engines are making development so simple now. So even, even like BuildBox with drag and drop, and you see all these hit games coming out, especially on iOS. And then you have like console devs looking at iOS, thinking you know, the grass is green on the other side. But really, I think it's best to focus on what you do. Now, I think with Cube, we, we had this sort of thing. We made Cube 1, and then we thought, okay, let's make an iOS version, a different type of game, when really we should have stayed on Steam and done and the next game on Steam. 
and we, we were just toying around and then almost shot ourselves in the foot in that regard. So yeah, to recap on some of the stuff I just said, the best thing I think to do is create an online portfolio. Yeah, and be a face, not just CV, whatever, because I think going to events, even if you want to look for a job in the industry, meeting the right people is going to, they're going to remember you. Um, they're going to remember your personality, remember what you were doing. Attending events, I mean, I've, I've been, I think I've been to like over 30 events in the past year, just going to diff just promoting different games, meeting new people. One, one key event actually was uh, Reboot Develop in Croatia. That was two weeks ago. And some of the speaker lineup was incredible. And because the event was so small, you could just go there and mingle with people like Tim Schafer, Cliffy B, and get to know them. Um, and then they're going to know about your game. And eventually, hopefully, they'll retweet the, your promotion of your game and so forth. And that's just really powerful in itself. Entering competitions. There's so many competitions. If you use the promoter app, there's, there's competitions coming up all the time, left, right, and center. A lot of them are free as well. So get your game into those. It's, only going to be good for um, the promotion of it. Social media presence, which is quite important. And then figuring out your strengths. So as an indie studio, you've got to wear many hats. And you're not always going to be good at everything. Um, if you're a business person, find uh, a really good level designer or vice versa. I think having someone looking out and someone looking in, like the person looking out can see the iceberg come in, and, and warn everyone else about that. So I think it's important that you figure that out early as well. Cool. So I'm going to show you the video for Hue now, the teaser trailer. Hopefully it works. Have many of you guys heard of Hue, by the way? Quite a few. Right, fingers crossed. Dearest Hugh, oh, I've had the most dreadful luck. I feel terrible that you've been left alone all this time. The traitorous Dr. Grey tried to steal the annular spectrum, a ring I developed to allow perception and alteration of colour. Some call them impossible colours. <laughs> impossible for Dr. Grey, maybe. Anyway, something went wrong. I turned a strange shade and became invisible. I stayed at home for weeks, watching, waiting, existing on this coloured plane, and I couldn't speak to you, nor interact with objects in the mono world. So I left. I left the university where I hid away the coloured tools I had created, just in case I could return. I am writing this letter with coloured ink. I pray you have found the ring and can read this. Yours lovingly, Mum. So that is Hugh. It is content complete now, and we are porting the game. Should be coming out this summer, hopefully. Um, but basically, everything I've just talked about, we've applied that to that game and taken it to as many events as we can, promoting it left, right, and center. But yeah, it looks like I've blitzed through that. So you can follow me on Twitter. You can send me an email if you have any questions. I think we're opening the floor up now for any more questions. But overall, thanks for watching. Questions? Hands up, I will come up to you with the mic. Yes. Uh, was it worth it putting out a boxed version of your game? Like, did you make a profit on that? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, so that, the, the publisher sort of covered all the costs, and we thought it would be nice to have a physical version, just so we could walk into a shop and see it there, um, and have, you know, have it on my desk, for example. Um, but profit-wise, not, not really. So... I, if they if they cover it, then yeah, go for it. But if not, I think there's something called Indie Box as well. I think they do box versions, so that's worth looking into. Yo, Hello. hey. Um, okay, so given how quickly things change, just like even within one to two years, what's a piece of advice uh, that you would that you would have given to someone if you had given this talk, like you know, several years ago, that no longer applies? 
Um, good question. I'm trying to think now. Um, hmm. <laughs> That's good. Um, so, of course, events and stuff, that, that just it keeps going. But I think, um, hmm, that's a very tough one. Because we're, we're pretty much doing the same thing as we did back then. I guess the main thing would be Steam, because that's really changed. Before, you could release a game on Steam and then have that front page exposure. But now you put a game on there, and unless you've done loads of stuff before, it's just going to get buried because there's so many games coming out. So it's important to think about how you're going to get around that problem. So I guess that's... Uh, <laughs> Anyone else? Come on, don't be shy. <laughs> so I want to say, like, I, I've looked... I, if you saw me here, I was, like, sitting and just nodding. Like, everything you said is spot on. Right. And I would like to reiterate, like, the first point you did. Twitter. Ah. Guys, Twitter. Hashtag in development. <laughs> I didn't see many of you tweeting. You should, like, do that now. Okay, one last warm applause to Don or Chad. Thank you for all the... All right, guys. thanks, guys. Woo! Thanks, guys.